Point your branches, you grow your tree straight up. These two branches that are blooming right now are spalding, and when we originally grafted them, they, they grew about six feet up, and then we bent it down. And then last year, the weight of the fruit started bending it down, so you see how we had to tie the branch up. So first you gotta bend the branch down, then you gotta tie it up. And we pruned off the, ve the vertical vegetative growth to encourage the spurs, which make the flowers, and the fruit and spurs also have leaves, so we didn't remove all the foliage. So these are the spurs, the little, the, like this. This is a spur. See, it it's looks like, pointed. And then the flowers come out. Mm -hmm. So over here, you can see some spurs where they haven't quite grown yet. They're ho horizontal for the most part. Okay. And if they're vertical, they're very short. And when they try to go vegetative, we clip it. So that's a really nice vertical spur. See how they're branching, but then this went vegetative, so we have to clip there. Because if not, it's going to just keep growing as it'll a, grow like it won't make no flowers. Six or ten feet up in a single year. So any ones on the sides, they're going to become flowers. And and so this is flowers and fruit, and this is wood, and we don't want to grow more wood. Right. And that's why we got to cut that out because all the energy is going to grow into growing this wood, and we don't want wood. We want the energy to go here into the spurs. Because this by is, energy, I mean you know the photosynthetic energy. This is from last year where you clipped it right yeah. and the, the spurs are coming off from the older wood and and the spur a spur can get vigorous like this see this was a spur and then it's growing out so you can either bend that spur down so that it starts making spurs or you can cut it off and at some point you just clip these little little growths but this is the other thing I wanted to show you is this is a different variety the Carnes and Carnes is pretty good for a hard pair but um, it, it's not as good as the spalding, but it flowers at the same time. So it's a good pollinator. Mm. And then you can see the, the rest of the tree with many different other varieties. They either haven't started growing yet at all, like this one, which is Suri, an Asian pear, or they're, they're later. So they they're are. Not, they're not compatible but they'll, pollinators. But they'll, um, so they have some other pollinators yeah. to kind of so even out. That's smart how you thought it out. So they're always a backup to help each other out. Yeah, you got to have something blooming at the same time that's genetically distinct for cross-pollination. And then you want the different varieties. And, and so this one is one where we grafted and we're still letting it grow up. I want it to get just a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to bend it down. And then it's going to start only developing spurs. So at first we want to grow the wood when we put on a new graft. Because mm -hmm. you need to establish that branch. But after it gets like just two feet taller this year, I'm going to tie it down, and then it's only we're only going to work on making spurs to, for fruit production. So, so it's clever. We did that with this one a couple years ago, and and we're now doing that with this one this year. It mm -hmm. grew enough, so we're starting to bend it down, and the weight of the fruit helps mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, this is going to set fruit, so it's, it'll be hanging, and it'll hang so low that it will become too slow growing mm -hmm. so we'll actually probably tie it up again to maintain support it relatively just slightly above horizontal so you want to let this yeah just like that so so sometimes you pull them up sometimes you pull them down it just depends on you just gotta gotta be always watching the tree what it needs yeah so do you have some flowers that will make in a, the next month oh yeah, yeah constantly it, throughout it, the the spring and summer not through really into the summer but it'll like it'll early spring. early spring yeah well, spring and yeah, really through the spring. So that means they'll be they'll actually have fruits throughout the every week, something different every few weeks. Well, di yeah, different varieties produce at different times, but I think it's probably June or July all the way to about October, November for pears around here. But it does depend on when it warms up and they bloom. I mean, sometimes they stay asleep into March. You know, I mean, they're usually all budded out by April. But this year, well, here we are in February, and they're blooming. It just depends on the year. It's crazy. But you know what? I, I love how it looks. I know they're pleased with it. They get to have fruit longer than most people would have. Just one harvest, they're having multiple. Get, I was hoping you could get a good shot of it from far. And the only vertical growth is where we're trying to establish a branch. Everything else has been pruned. And all the rest of the vertical growth has been pruned to grow spurs. Right. Wood. 
So how would someone start this? Would they just grow the tree straight up and then start pulling down and then grafting? Um, I would figure out what height you want your branches and grow your tree straight up and then cut it to get side branches. And we should we should do plant some little ones and we can do it, you know, from start to finish. It only take twenty years, that's no big deal. Right. <laughs> but um but then you figure out what height you want your branches. And then when they're very young, when the branches are like this big, that's when you want to start training them. Okay. Yeah. So because pears make these narrow angles, see that? You you really gotta start training them when they're very young. Even earlier than this would be better. It's good to know. Yeah. So so you really gotta you really got to start a branch at a wide angle like this from the very beginning of the branch. Right. So then when the time comes to graft it, then you let that graft grow up really tall for what, one year so, to two years? So, so then so then you'd have a nice horizontal branch coming out and then stake it up. And then it does like this. It starts to grow vigorously. Okay. And see how fat this one is? Yeah. And how skinny this is? I'm trying to graft a different variety here. So I'm going to let this grow like six feet up. And then I'll bend it down to make this kind of pair, which is a shinko, another Asian pair. Mm -hmm. So, so once you got a, a good horizontal branch, you stake it up, and then it goes vigorously straight up, and then cut that off and graft it there, and then it will vigorously grow your new graft. And then when that's about six feet tall and it's still flexible, you bend it down, like we're doing, going to do over here. Mm -hmm. So this is like, I just grafted this, and then I grafted this last year, and it grew. And this one grew a little quicker. It, it's the same age as this one, but it grew quicker, so now we're training it. Mm -hmm. And this one's a couple years older. So you can actually see what we're doing the first year, kind of the second, second year. year. Now we're into the third year. Yeah, I love the third year. Yeah. All the hard work. You know, this is good for someone that has a small yard, and they only can fit one tree they could just multi and, multi graft it like this and I would actually expect the tree to get about twice as wide maybe 35 40 feet wide when it's finally wow. mature but that's going to be many years right but it's uh, something to look forward to and uh, show people it's, it's possible but I think the overall shape is important you can kind of see it and you can see the different grafts blooming at the different times yeah Useful. What type was this over here? That's another spalding. Spalding? Yeah, everybody really likes the spalding. So we we did two big spalding grafts. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank See you, you soon.